Kuraga. They are coming from uh, Afcon, where a lot of matches have been played concerning our particular competition. Women's Cup of Nations taking place in Morocco. Well, Burkina Faso versus Uganda ended 2 2. It was a fight to finish between the two countries, but well, the two countries did not make it because uh, uh, Senegal and Morocco they were able to scale through. Well, coming here on the show, 360 Sports on Trust TV, I am Adini Aji Shafe. We have to look at activities in the world of sport during the week, those that broke out, and also. So the one for the weekend will be uh, previewing the matches that will be coming up in the MPFA and all the stories that actually broke out during the week in the world of sport. It's always very juicy when you talk about sport. Now let's start about the review of the week, about the activities that happened during the week. Starting from AFCON 2023, news came out that CAF, the Confederation of African Football, actually received this decision by saying, okay, Morocco will be the host because, uh, well, uh, this time around, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, I beg your pardon, Cote d'Ivoire will be the host, but it won't be in 2023 anymore. It will be in 2024 because news came out earlier on that, well, they just have to consider the rainy season in Cote d'Ivoire, looking at the way the rain has been falling. If they play it June, July, it won't actually go well with that competition. That's why they decided to change the timings to January, February, 2024. CAF President Patrick Mosepe mistakenly announced that it will be, well, it will be like that. But right now, they just have to look at that and now they agree that they just have to turn things around by saying by January, February 2024. That will be happening live. Uh, that will do with uh, Cote d'Ivoire. They will be hosting Africa by that time and it will be back to the normal time that we normally host uh, Africa Cup of Nations in Africa. Now, still talking about the events that happen during the week, we have to look at a Nigerian. Yes, you can't take it away from Israel at this one. Yeah, who is really uh, representing Nigeria. So when it comes to UFC, he was able to defend his belt against uh, Jad Kanonea there to retain the UFC 276 middleweight title. And he was able to do it convincingly. Good one for him because after this particular fight, uh, uh, Israel this one has become a phenomenon when it comes to UFC 276 retaining the belt and in his career so far he has only lost once he has done it so uh, wonderfully well by making sure he wins almost all his fight except one congrats to Israel at this one in the middleweight category of this sport he is a champion the time he ven actually ventured out to lightweight, he lost that fight. And now back to the weight he knows very well. He's still a champion any day, any time. Congrats to Israel at this one, yeah, retaining the belt in the UFC 276, where he actually holds sway. Now talking about another one that happened during the week. Bayana Bayana of South Africa. Well, this time around, they also did it again by defeating Nigeria in the first game in Group C. They were able to defeat us 2-1 in that game. It was a tough one because a lot of Nigerians were not happy for the fact that we lost against them now 
third time that has been happening consecutively after the beat us at the Aisha Buhari Cup. We lost to them uh, when it comes to the 2018 WAFCON and now 2022, the first game in our group. We also lost to the youthful team of Bayana Bayana. Well, that game saw Nigeria ladies really struggling. They struggled all through that game against Bayana Bayana, trying to see how they can redeem their image, but they lost 2-1. Rashid Al-Ajibade was able to at least uh, pull one back for Nigeria, although it wasn't enough as we lost that game 2-1 against Bayana Bayana in that game. Well, uh, after this game, Nigeria and Lady actually bounced, but I'll be getting to that as we roll on the show. Quickly, let's talk about another one that has to do with Nigeria. This time around, it's cycling. Cycling is a sport a lot of Nigeria really don't know that this sport is very, very lucrative. You don't know how to, if you know how to uh, cycle very well, just go into cycling. You can become the next star for Nigeria. Well, Cycling Federation of Nigeria leads at the five-man team uh, for second African track championship, where we'll be hosting it in Abuja. Abuja will be the host for the second edition, and about 20 countries will be coming to Nigeria to participate in the competition. And the good thing is that where they released that particular uh, list, that the five-man list. But let's look at the, for the elite cyclists that have been uh, picked by the Nigeria. That is uh, Cycling Federation of Nigeria. John Gabriel, Bethel Okea, Kurotimi Abaka, Isa Momo, Bethel Vitalis, Mutiu Aziz Akonde. You have Shedrak Igubo, Odumu Kalama, and Tunde Bakari among the elite male cyclists. And for the elite uh, female cyclists that was also invited, we have the likes of S.A. Upeseraye, Tom Brapa, Gripa, Mary Samuel, Adejoke Drog, Bade, Grace Ayuba, Tawakati Yekin, Treasure Coxin, and have Happiness Ernest among those uh, uh, cyclists that have been invited by Cycling Federation of Nigeria to at least make sure we host and win. It is very possible as Nigeria will be hosting. Uh, a lot of uh, cont uh, countries are coming for this event. We want to hope, uh, host and win and also make sure we actually uh, top the best of cyclists from Africa. Good one coming from Cycling Federation of Nigeria there. At least uh, we want to see them doing well in this competition. Away from cycling, let's quickly look at two other Nigerians who did well when it comes to athletics. During the week over there in France, they were able to uh, they run, actually two of them, one of them in long jump and the other one in uh, hurdles. It has to do with uh, S.A. Brume and Toby Amotion. S.A. Brume was able to do well. She jumped high uh, in long jump and she was able to do long jump 6.65 uh, in her own long jump. And we'll have uh, Toby over Amotion actually ran 20.82 seconds to win her own race in 100 meter Hodos, good one. Uh, uh, Esibrim was ahead of Asani in 6.51 uh, when it comes to the jump in long jump women. And you have Abigail Irozuru who actually did uh, 6.44 uh, in that same competition, International de Sotville Meet Resort in France. And in 100 meter hurdles, we have Tobiloba Amushon actually doing well in that particular race. There are 12.82 seconds that she ran to win ahead of Luca Kuzak, who ran 12.93 seconds, and Claudia Siziach with 12.95 seconds. Congrats to Tobiloba Amushon and S.A. Brome for what they did over there in France, really preparing ahead of the uh, what athletic champions have been coming up in Oregon, also the Commonwealth Games, where both of them have been fantastic so far this season, including other Nigerian athletes who are really ready to go for Nigeria now. And we hope that they'll be able to do well by the time they get to Oregon in USA and not forgetting Birmingham City over there in England for the Commonwealth Games. It's really edging close, and every day Nigerian athletes have been doing so well, and we hope that they will transfer, transfer that to the main event by the time it starts proper. Now, still looking at the events during the week, highlighting all the juicy sporting stories that happened during the week. We look at uh, MPFL, where the organizers, the LMC, League management company rolled it out that match day 37 and 38 will be happening simultaneously. That's the news coming from the MPFL there, March day 37, 38. That's this weekend and next weekend. It will be happening simultaneously across Nigeria. All the 10 stadia that will be hosting this event will be happening at the same time by 4 to 6. There won't be any additional time so that no one can cheat there. Well, it's very dicey now. That will be happening for this weekend and also next weekend. March 37 and March day 38. 
in the Nigerian Professional Football uh, League. Still talking about all this happening in the world of football and also other sports. The good thing is that when it comes to sport, always very juicy. Now, let's enjoy some uh, grassroots football where EFCC FC, they actually face the City FC in their own Nigerian National League. Look at the that happened in Abuja. Let's have it. So I believe that it's going to be anywhere. The ticket is ours. And at the end, we get it. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could have won the game. We have a first chance in the first half. And we have the second one in the second half. We couldn't come back to it. So that was why the game ended. The result at the end. Well, it's okay. I'm happy. Uh, of, of course, uh, they will not expect that the game will be like a walkover. EFCC, if they lose, they will go to relegation. So they also need to win. We want to go to promotion. So it's both sides are looking for something. So it's a very good game. And you should know that it's a game of his two brothers are playing. There. Both of them know their self, the two teams. All the players they know each other. So it's a very good game. For me, I'm happy. It's a look at Debbie. It's just like let go, let go uh, uh, Real Madrid. It's also like, like that. When Liverpool is playing everything, you see Man City, Man, Man United, that's how it is. So that is how it's supposed to be. So uh, the two teams, I'm sure they'll be happy with it. But, of course, why, but you should remember that even if we were in the Premier, we also meet in the FA Cup, so they will, they will always be the debut. So the truth is, uh, the, we still have three games to go. Uh, so both we, uh, Sokoto, both uh, Kanami, everybody. They at least uh, have been at, at least looking at the local debut between EFCC and City FC. A good match between the two teams. 
or I City were looking for, uh, try to see how they can qualify for the MPFL. AFCC were avoiding relegation. A tough match between the two teams there, a local derby, and you can just call it Abuja El Clasico. Very tough match. It ended in a draw between the two teams. Well, let's see what's going to happen concerning the City FC, because right now, they are really edging close, but El Kanemi Warriors of Mayaduguri are topping that particular group and they are leading there with extra two points. A big one there, we will be playing their game on Wednesday as they will be seeing if they can actually close that gap and qualify for the MPF. Let's say team from FCT at least play in the MPFL. Still talking about activities during the week, we have to look at the one that was rolled out by CAF about the uh, CAF Women Player of the Year, where they nominated four Nigerian stars. Talking about Asisat Oshoala, Chiamakana Doze, not forgetting Rashida Ajibade, making that list alongside Uchena Kanu. Four of them they were nominated alongside other players across Africa, as uh, Nigeria have four slots there. Hopefully, they were, one of them will be able to scoop it. Asisat Oshoala has actually won it four times. Uh, goalkeeper uh, Nadoze among them, Rashida Ajiba, they are not forgetting Uche Nakano. Well, uh, for the four of them, they really deserve to be there. And we are looking at, is it possible for a Nigerian to scoop it this time around? It is very possible. Since talking about the CAF Women Player of the Year, after that, they also nominated two Nigerians in the Young Player of the Year Award. That has to do with Gift Monday. Give Monday played for Bielsa Queens, and she was able to do well there. Give Monday, uh, well, she's a very fantastic player alongside uh, Flourish Sebastian. Flourish Sebastian played for Rivers uh, Angels. Both of them nominated for Young Player of the Year in that particular category. And she's talking about the award. We also have Club of the Year, where Rivers Angels were nominated among the team of the year. That is how to do with African teams. Good one. At least uh, Rivers Angels being able to make that particular uh, nomination there. Good one for uh, Rivers Angels. And still talking about the same award. They also have uh, others that has to do with uh, uh, the player that plays in Africa. That's the Inter Club Player of the Year that involved Gift Monday also and Mirian Ezenagu. Mirian Ezenagu, part of that particular nominated uh, nominee for that award. They are a good one. We have a lot of Nigerians making this particular list. When it comes to women football, Nigeria is one of the forces to be reckoned with. We've been very fantastic and consistent over the years. And congrats to all the nominees that have been nominated by CAF for the Women Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year, not forgetting the Club of the Year and also Inter Club Player of the year there. Congrats to all the nominees and we hope that they can at least win all the categories that they are no, that they have been nominated for. Now away from the CAF player of the year, let's quickly talk about another one that broke out during the week that has to do with Commonwealth Games where Nigerian Table Tennis Federation listed some players, some table tennis stars to represent us at the Commonwealth Games. That has to do with the likes of uh, Aona Quadri or Motayo Belo, the top of the list there. Let's look, for, let's look at the list for the male. Four of them that has to do with uh, Aona Quadri in the list. And we have Olagidea Motayo, Bodea Biodun, and Amadio Ome. Amadio Ome is coming for the first time to represent Nigeria. And let's see if we will be able to justify the reason why they nominated her and him, rather, to be part of that particular uh, list. And for the women, Fatima Belo, Edem Ofion, Esther Oribamishi, and Ajoke Ojamu, four of them will also be representing Nigeria. They'll be flagging high the flag of this country at the Commonwealth Games when it comes to ping pong sports called table tennis. We wish them all the best, and we hope that uh, Nigeria will actually win gold in table tennis. One of the forces to be reckoned with in Africa, at least our own, Anna Kodri is number one in Africa, and right now is doing so well, even in the world, being ranked 11th. We just have to appreciate the fact that these sportsmen that has to do with table tennis are also stars in their own right. Not only in football, we just have to look at other sports, and we appreciate all the other athletes in different sports that make us proud as a green, white, green country called Nigeria. Now, from there, let's talk about another one that happened during the week. Why Falcons lost their fourth game against uh, the Bayana Bayana? They also came back. They bounced back to reckoning as they faced Botswana. They call it the Maris of Botswana. They were able to win their game 2-0 uh, to silence them in that game. Congrats to Super Falcons who actually rolled back to reckoning 
as they did well in that particular match that a lot of Nigeria were waiting for what to happen. After all, uh, Botswana, uh, Botswana coach was talking tough that they would defeat Nigeria because South Africa actually exposed us. But it was not to be. Nigerian ladies came to the party. They were able to win that game. Tuni, Ifeoma, Onumenu, and Uchebe, they were on song as they defeated uh, the marriage of uh, Botswana in that particular game, now giving them three points uh, to be second on the group. Right, South Africa, they are having six points. Looking at the way the table is standing, they are after playing two matches. Nigeria are trailing the Bayana Bayana by three points because they have six, we have three. And Botswana, they also have three after winning their first game against Burundi. Now, from the way it's standing, the fight is still on because we'll be facing them. That will be on Sunday. We'll be facing Burundi and that will be a tough one. Let's wait to see what's going to happen between Nigeria and Burundi as we hope that we can actually win that game. We need to win it to qualify for the way he's standing in our own group. See, talking about the happenings in the world of sport during uh, the week there. As we talk about Nigeria returning to winning ways by the Super Falcons of Nigeria, we also have to talk about our former FIFA president, Sel Blatter. Well, he was uh, discharged and acquitted of that particular issue that has to do with corruption charges alongside France football legend Michel Platini. Platini was leading UEFA at that time when they were both charged for corruption. And now that particular charges have been dropped against them over there in Bellinzona, in the Swiss court, where two of them have been discharged and acquitted. Well, from Michel Platini, he said he will be doing everything possible to make sure those that corrupt uh, ones will be charged also. He wants to come out with different charges against others who he, he believes uh, were really at fault concerning that. Well, good one. At least, uh, Sir Blatter can enjoy himself now at the age of 86. Uh, well, see, going to court will be too good for Sir Blatter. And for Michel Platini at 67, now getting acquitted after a long run of uh, lawsuit against both of them. Well, they actually have a, to say, have a uh, sigh of relief now because uh, they have been discharged and acquitted. Now, still talking about uh, football, just let's see what happened between Nigeria and Botswana after we were able to score those two goals from Ifeoma Numenu and Uchebe Christian. Well, they are super far comes of Nigeria. They did well defeating Botswana, who actually made so much mouth concerning that game. It ended in favor of the our lady, the champion of Africa, nine time champions. They were able to do it convincingly, silencing them, even though we were hoping for more goals or that we can have more goals. Well, at least they won that game there. Good one, and congrats to them as they prepare ahead of uh, playing against Burundi on Sunday. Wishing them all the best as they prosecute that particular game there. Super Falcons, as I said earlier, have been champions of Africa for the past uh, uh, a lot of uh, time now. At least nine times they won it and want to see them doing so well at the World Cup. That's paramount now because a lot of Nigerians are hoping that Super Falcons can actually make a big and huge statement at the World Cup if we are able to qualify for this edition that will be coming up. Now, let's talk about activities for this weekend. After reviewing all the stories that happened during the week, well, Super Falcons, after losing, they won. So that's the biggest one so far. We have to appreciate the fact that the ladies 
came back to life. And also their coach, that's uh, Randy Wardrum, was able to also do something wonderful, turning things around by changing some of the players that played the first game. Asisa Doshuala, painfully, is out of the competition because of injury as uh, she sustained in the first game. And we just uh, believe that she gets well soon as all Nigerians are wishing her the best, uh, a quick recovery to Asisa Oshuala there. Now, looking at event for this weekend, starting from WAFCON, the Women Africa of Nations are taking place in Rabat, Morocco. A lot of uh, matches uh, that will be coming up. Let's look at games that will be coming up for uh, this weekend. Well, we, before we look at the game anyway, let's look at the result of yesterday. The game was played yesterday. Well, before then, Cameroon, Tunisia, well, Morocco, Senegal, 1-0. Uh, it's also a good one for Morocco as we were able to defeat Senegal. And Burkina Faso versus Uganda ended 2-2. That was the clip you saw earlier uh, between Burkina Faso and Uganda, they play a uh, 2 2 draw there. For the host country, that's Morocco, they peeped Senegal. 1-0. And looking at the table now, Morocco, 9 points, showing their class ahead of uh, Senegal with 6 points. Burkina Faso, 1. Uganda, 1 point. That's uh, a very poor performance for the two countries. Just, uh, they tried their best. They only got just 1 point from 3 games. You have Morocco and Senegal really running away with all the points. And now they are celebrating. Morocco, Senegal, they are true to the quarterfinals of this competition. And now let's see who they'll be playing in the next game. She's talking about the WAFCON now. Let's look at the games that are slated for today in the competition. That has to do with Cameroon and Tunisia. We have Zambia versus Togo, another big one there. Looking at the way the table is standing in Group B now. Uh, looking at the fact that all the teams have been playing in this tournament. They've been trying their best, but might not just be enough. Let's look at the way the table is standing here. Cameroon, Tunisia, Togo, and also Zambia. You have Zambia with four points ahead of Tunisia. They have three, Cameroon two, and Togo with one. Very, very tough group because you have just four, three, two, one. Anyone can still qualify. The last game, it will be the decider of this particular group B. Zambia with four, with a goal difference of one. Tunisia with goal difference of two. And you have Cameroon with no goal difference. They've considered also the same amount of goals they've actually scored. For Togo, minus three. That's a big one there. So Zambia, Tunisia, Cameroon, the three of them will be fighting to see who will be making it so the next round that has to do with quarter finals in this competition. See, talking about WAFCON now, let's look at the one that will be happening on Sunday. Nigeria, Burundi, big match. Nigeria just have to win that game. We need to defeat Burundi. And also South Africa, although they've qualified that group, they want to remain top of the group against Botswana. They'll be playing against Botswana. They are from the uh, same part of the continent, from Southern Africa. So they are neighbors. South Africa, Botswana, Nigeria, Burundi. A big match that will be happening between Nigeria and Burundi there. Now, looking at the table as it stands in our group, we have six points from South Africa after two matches. They won all their games. Goal difference, three. Nigeria, we go difference of one. We have three points after we were able to defeat Botswana. Botswana are trailing us. We have, they have three points also, but on zero, uh, that has to do with goal difference. Burundi, minus four. Minus four is their goal difference. They have no points at all. And Nigeria uh, Falcons, uh, we hope and uh, believe that they can do it against, uh, against Burundi. It is very possible that they can defeat Burundi. If they do that, they will be having six points to at least uh, also make it to the next round. That has to do with qualifier, quarterfinals. And we hope that Nigerian ladies will actually come to the party. The way they did against Botswana, they did so well, far, far better than against South Africa and that, uh, well, uh, it's going to be a very fantastic game because uh, Nigerians at home are rooting for them to see how they better their lot in that particular match there. We'll be joining Enid Obadina, who will be giving us uh, some analysis concerning Nigeria versus Burundi. Expectations are high. A lot of Nigerians are waiting to see what will the ladies do against Burundi in their next game on Sunday. Can they win that game as they did against Botswana? Enid Obadina will be joining us to let us have that particular analysis concerning that game. But we are waiting for Enid Obadina to link up. We'll be looking at Randy Wadram. Randy Wadram is the Nigerian coach for the uh, for ladies. That is the Super Falcon, our senior team. Recently, he made some remarks concerning Nigerian journalists, and that didn't go well because he was like, they are negative about 
about him and also concerning the uh, Super Falcons. That didn't go well. The Nigerian Football Federation has to call him to order, and he actually apologized to so Nigerian media by saying, well, he holds them in high esteem. Uh, that has to do with uh, uh, Randy Wadron retracting his uh, derogative comment on Nigerian media. He says he holds them in high esteem, and he, res he respects them any day, any time. Good one there. That's wisdom. He quickly retracted his steps by appreciating Nigerian journalists for what they are doing concerning uh, reporting all these stories that have to do with Super Falcons. If they don't do well, we have to talk about it. And if they do well, we also praise them for the fact that they lost against South Africa. A lot of people were angry and, they, well, they didn't really perform up to expectations. They were too slow in that match and the press came out writing, talking, a lot of things about Super Falcons. That didn't go well with Randy Wardrum, who also went Basak concerning that. Now we just have to look at uh, what we are looking at. That's the point between Nigeria versus Burundi. The match will be coming up on Sunday. Can we beat Burundi as we did against Botswana? Any Tom Badino, are you there? Okay, well, we are still waiting for him to link us. Uh, we we'll quickly look at other stories in the world of sport that will be, do, uh, be uh, that has to do with our own league. MPFL has really uh, gone too far now. Let's let's look at match day 37 fixtures for this weekend. Matches will be coming up across different stadia in Nigeria, but it will be played simultaneously at the same time in 10 different stadiums. Now that will be happening by 4 p.m. On Sunday. Let's look at the games slated for this weekend. Well, they at least uh, having Nigerian professional football league, Quara United against MFM, Niger Sonados versus Heartland. Big match there that will happen this weekend. Eimba versus Dakada, Lobby Stars, Wiki Tories, Aqua United versus Abia Warriors. Shooting south of Ibadan, they will playing against the winner of the league, Rivers United over there in Ibadan. Nasarawa United against Kano Pillars. Big one for the MPFL. You look at Gombe United at home against Enugu Rangers as Niger Tanados and Sunshine Star will be at home. You'll be playing at home against Heartland FC and Remo Stars of uh, uh, Remo Stars of Ikene there. Well, that will be a big match. If you still look at the way the table is standing over there, match day 36 of the MPFL, that will be a big one because a lot of uh, clubs want to see how they can at least get out of relegation. It's very dicey now. All the teams are trying to see how they can get out of relegation when it comes to the MPFL. Why Rangers, uh, Rivers United, they won the league alongside Plateau United, who actually second on the log. Plateau United have joined them by qualifying for the CAF Champions League and the Rivers United are now celebrating. Congrats to them for the matches for this weekend. We just read out their MFM where they've uh, gone down. They've been relegated from the MPFL. There's nothing they can do. Even if they win the remaining two matches, it won't change anything when it comes to the MPFL. MPFL match day 37 fixtures coming up for this weekend. Well, we'll be looking at uh, a lot of stories for this weekend. The MPFL is getting very serious now because of the remaining two matches. It's going to be very dicey. That's where you see some teams joining MFM in relegation and some will actually get be able to uh, qualify for CAF Confederation Cup. Red Monsters are trying their best to see if they can hold it down. We're waiting to see what will happen for the match this weekend. Now, we talk about uh, uh, the MPFL, match is at the seventh fixtures. Let's look at uh, some games. Nasarawa United, they played their game against Rivers United, and also weak Tories against Aqua United. Let's have it back to back. <laughs>
and I think it is become the first side uh, to win uh, the to win the African Cup in this and to win the continental competition for so Rivers United. We have a sharp Emmanuel Uzobe just number 22. We have number 15, Pampa Baka. Number 24, Desmond. And Pampa Baka. Number 15, Pampa Baka. very well to uh, recover the point that was lost against Sunshine Shooting Stars and uh, got in some mercy, did not give us that point. So we know definitely that this match is very important to us. Look at the position that we are in the block and the number of points that we have. With these three points, 
we, we, we are confident that yes, we are going to remain in Africa. We are going there with a target. Our mission is to go there and pick a point because our aim for this season is to finish first five. And we, we, we are confident that we are going to do that. Thinking of tactical approach and uh, made them to understand that look, <coughs> the first half are going and it's considered it's 2-0, so there's no point of defending anymore. So we need to keep our game, keep our head cool, be tactically disciplined, and create the chances. So maybe perhaps we can get one goal or two goals. And the chances came that we couldn't have the two That's one of those things we We go back home to go and collect the mistakes. And I met the team when the team were being needed to salvage a lot of situations. And I can see that the team, this situation... Wiki Torres versus Aqua United. Now you have Nasara United against Rivers United there. Just to let you have a feel of the MPFL matches that was played. And the good thing is that all the teams are fighting for this weekend, match day 37. But let's look at the way the table is standing, that match day 36 after they all play their games. It's a big one right now because the likes of Katsina United, Heartland, Dakada, not even forgetting Kano Pillar, Shooting Stars, Lobby. Niger Sanados all need to fight hard to remain in the MPFL alongside Abia Warriors, Nasarawa United. Not forgetting Wiki Torres, although they are said they will fight harder to make sure they stand among the top five. Well, from the beginning, Rivers United are topping with 74 points, followed by Plateau United with 64 points. They both qualify for CAF Champions League and have Remo Stars in third position with 56 points, ahead of uh, Quara United with 55 points. Rangers International, they are uh, fifth on the log. And you have Ayimba International. Ayimba right now have been picked to play at uh, the CAF Super Cup from Nigeria. Good one for them. Ayimba 6 with 52 points. Sunshine Stars 51. Aqua United are 8 on the log with 51 points. Alongside Gombe United, Wiki Tauris on 49 points from 1 to 10. And 11 to 20 is open that uh, all the teams just have to fight harder because the battle is still on March day 37, March day 38, that will be played across Nigeria simultaneously. For MFM, they are out of the league because right now there's nothing they can do. The six points they will get from the remaining two matches will actually save them. Well, MFM, they are out of the MPFL for the next season. Well, Rivers United, Plateau United, Cup Champions League, Remo Stars hold it. Uh, well, if Remo Stars can hold, that would be nice. Quara United, Rangers International, Eyimba International, all routine to qualify for Cup Champions League there. Well, March day 37 is here, and we wait to see what these teams will be playing. Now, while we wait for our guests to join us, let's quickly run through some transfer stories in the world of football. A lot of players moving here and there. Well, we just have to appreciate the fact that as we are speaking right now, Brentford, Brentford will not give up. They said they won't give up on midfielder Christian Eriksen, who is expected to join Manchester United. Manchester United player uh, fans are waiting, are really waiting that this Danish player will join them, hoping for the best for uh, Eriksen to actually make that move to join Manchester United. But Brentford, the team that he played for last season, they want to make sure they hold him down. They don't want him to go after all. After Inter Milan drop him due to the uh, issue of his illness, uh, it was Brentford that came to his rescue to offer him football activities and now they want to use that to hold him down. What well, is a lot of drama and concerning uh, Christian Eriksen's transfer. I'm still talking about some transfer story. We're talking about Arsenal. Arsenal are considering a move for Benfica Spanish left back Alex Grimado. Grimado has been the player that Arsenal are holding for. They want to get him and they are considering a move for the Benfica uh, left back. He's a defender and he's a very good player. They want him to join them over there. Well, if it's possible that Mikel Arteta can actually scoop this particular transfer deal, Alex Grimado will be adding a lot of sparks to the team that plays over there at the Emirates. Good one there for us. Now, still talking about transfer. This time around, we move straight to uh, Stamford Bridge, where Chelsea, Chelsea to offer defender Rhys James contract extension despite current day running to June 2025. Rhys James has been with Chelsea and now they want to make sure they extend the contract of this uh, English uh, defender. And if everything goes well, it will, be, it will be with them. And this offer actually seems stay more with Chelsea. Well, current day run to June 2025 and he wants to extend it. That would be nice. Let's see what they marry between Chelsea and Rhys James. How long will it last? Still talking about uh, Chelsea. They are the favourites to 
sign Rafinha, uh, well, they, to sign Rafinha for 55 million pounds after they make that particular offer. Although Barcelona have also offered their own final bid for Rafinha, they offer 47, and you can actually see where that particular story is coming from because uh, Chelsea offered more. They offer 55 million pounds for Rafinha while Barcelona offer 47. And if everything goes well uh, with personal terms and also with the club, it is very possible that Rafinha will be moving away uh, from his uh, club to join Chelsea, though Barcelona are not giving up. They believe Rafinha will join them. We're still waiting to see what's going to be happening concerning that, if everything goes well between Rafinha, Chelsea, and Barcelona, a triangular uh, deal there. Now, still talking about some transfer stories. Now, let's talk about Manchester United have made an improved offer for Ajax uh, defender Lisandro Lopez. Lisandro uh, Martinez, rather. Martinez has been a player that they want to buy and they've been going for him. Lisandro Martinez, well, he plays for Ajax and Manchester United. They want to get him. 43 million pounds has been the amount that they offer for this Argentine. Good one there. If everything goes well, well, Lisandro Martinez will be moving to join Manchester United to get himself uh, down to Old Trafford. And Arsenal, Arsenal are interested in Lyon's Brazilian midfielder, Lucas Paqueta. Lucas Paqueta, who has also been living with Newcastle right now, is also interested in Arsenal. The Gunners are doing everything possible to make sure they snatch him away from the hand of Newcastle, who wants the Lyon midfielder, Lucas Paqueta, he is from Brazil, and the Gunners are also rooting to get him to play in their midfield. She's talking about the Gunners, Arsenal are also interested in resigning or Julian Minfida, Ismail Benessa. Ismail Benessa was formerly with Arsenal. They allowed him to move and he joined Empoli. Now they want to get him back from uh, Empoli. Well, <laughs> from the way it is, Arsenal need to work harder because a lot of clubs are also going in for uh, Ismail Benessa. They want to get him and from AC Milan to Empoli, now back to uh, Arsenal. If if goes well, Arsenal might be getting their player back and Algerian uh, midfielder who has been doing so well while they moved to Italia City. So ah, see, looking at some stories now, West Ham United are weighing up a move of 13 million pounds for Netherlands forward Justin Kluvert. Justin Kluvert is a player that they want to get from Roma, and now they are offering 13 million pounds for the, uh, the Dutch forward Justin Kluver, the son of uh, uh, Patrick Kluver. They are a good one. West Ham are ready to do business. They are offering 13 million pounds to Jose Mourinho uh, led team. That is uh, uh, yes, Roma. And we see, look at Roma. Roma are considering making a B for Crystal Palace and Cote d'Ivoire uh, forward with Zaha. Reza Zaha has been fantastic for Crystal Palace. And now they want to get him, uh, if he can actually join them over there, if you can join them in Roma, that would be nice. Jose Mario is going for Crystal Palace star, Wilfred Zaha. And the last on the uh, transfer story is that Real Madrid flop. Yes, you have to call him flop because he only scored three goals, goals in 51 matches. Luka Jovic. Luka Jovic is right now, he's already, he has been in uh, Florian, the city of Florence is in Florence to join uh, Fiorentina right now. Real Madrid outcast Luka Jovic right now has landed there to finalize his deal to stay with them on a free transfer. He didn't perform at all. He didn't perform well at Real Madrid after they bought him for about 66 million pounds. He scored three goals in 51 matches. What a way to go for Luka Jovic, who is now looking for an escape route. He needs to move away from Real Madrid quickly, and he has already landed in the city of Florence to sign for Fiorentina. And all that did, that would be nice for him to get his career back after uh, he will have his, actually, after his medical with the city of, uh, with Fiorentina in the city of Florence. They are a good one for Luka Jovic. Finally, he's out of Real Madrid. He will be joining Fiorentina. This is all the transfer to we have for you quickly for you to have a feel. And now we just have to come back to the studio to talk about our man, any any bad who will be joining us concerning the issue between Nigeria and Burundi. That game is a big issue because we want to see our ladies winning. Any bad enough? Can we win this game? Uh, <laughs> it's possible for us to win the game. Uh, it's uh, Burundi so far has turned out to be the whipping team of the group. Uh, they've lost two consecutive games, 4-2 to Botswana and 3-1 to South Africa. 
But of course, uh, they, are, they will not lie down low. Uh, South Africa sort of demystified us, and we did not lay down enough marker we are with the Botswana team. So it's going to be a bit hard for us to walk over them as easy as we might want. So it's a hard job for us, but we should be able to beat uh, Burundi. Or we can beat Burundi, right? Yeah, it, 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 it should be another easy game if we get it right. It starts with the formation with the coach. Um, I, I tweeted this and people were laughing when we were playing Botswana that the injury has helped us to make better changes than the actual national team coach uh, would have made. Uh, we saw the difference when Richard Chukwelu uh, stepped out of the field injured and then the coach brought in Christy Uchebe, uh, the Benfica midfielder, of course, Regina Otu, and we saw how the game changed. How energy and vitality came into the midfield, and of course we saw Uchebe getting the second goal. Okay, now looking at uh, around the world drum formation so far in this competition, both against South Africa and also against uh, Botswana, it seems a lot of people are having they are having concern concerning this formation that the way it plays some players instead of him to start some that are still more young and youth are very strong instead of him playing them, he prefers to start with the old legs. What do you take? What's your take on this? Uh, it, it's, it's a tough call by the coach, and I, I would like to be in his head to know how he arrived at some of the decisions in terms of playing, deliberately playing players uh, out of uh, position. Uh, I will start with the fullback. I don't say playing for us, that she's not a natural fullback. Uh, she has an, she's an attacking player. I, I guess, uh, I, okay, I found out that Ashley Pumtree got a knock after that game against Africa. That's why she didn't play then. Another attacker uh, playing in the Spanish Femina uh, Liga, uh, talking about um, pain, was asked to play left back. So that tells you that we are restricting our ability because these players will need 100% focus for to play in a position they've not been playing before. So they were played outside of the position. Even if you look at the midfield, the, the, uh, the coordination of the midfield, Rita is meant to be a, a central or defensive midfielder, but she is more attacking than the attacking midfielders in that team that should have been Aide. And we saw the difference Aide made in the second game when she was allowed to move forward with the ball. Her ability to pick a pass through the needle and her ability to also uh, uh, shoot the ball properly unlike uh, Rita would do. So we had a lot of troubles with the formation. Even in the first game against South Africa, uh, Ifama Onumonu was played as a winger. She's a central striker who uh, a different kind of striker than Nigeria has been used to over the years. Uh, for us, we usually go for the big, bull, big, strong strikers, but she's a bit lighter on her feet and she can. She's more of a fox in the box, and of course, get the deal done where you need it, where you need her to do that. So it was a tough call to watch. Uh, even as at playing centrally was a bit strange for me uh, because Abasona she doesn't frequently play in that position. She comes from the ring because they needed to use her pace and ability to beat Amaka. Uh, from the wing, she might not be a permanent uh, winger, but she comes from the wing, which was, which was to uh, advantage to the style of our play. So a lot of things went wrong with the formation of the code. We saw that at some point, uh, Tony Payne could not go forward because she needed to protect we our have central to go now because of our time. That, we have to go now. We have to appreciate your time with us. Thank you very much, Eliton, for joining us from Lagos on the show. Thank you so much, Eliton. Thank you for having me. Well, that'll be it on 360 Sport. It's always business and fitness. I am Adini Ajishafe. Have a splendid weekend. Thanks for watching.